Okay, I have one question. What was it with the 90s with kids' TV shows and kids' movies that people wanted to take risks on and actually try to scare little kids? Anyway, I'm getting off track right now, but I just had to throw, it out, th throw that out there. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. So Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island has been highly requested for me for who knows how long. I just never... I just never really got to a moment where how can I talk about this movie because this has got to be one of my favorite Scooby-Doo movies next to Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, but that's only because the Witch's Ghost had Tim Curry in it, and Tim Curry is a national treasure. And anyway, this is a movie that I've wanted to talk about for a very long time, and with many people requesting it, I might as well talk about it. So in Scooby-Doo on, on Zombie Island... The Scooby the Scooby Doo gang has been broken up for who knows how long. They're no longer teenagers anymore, going to haunted places, getting chased by monsters, or even unmasking them in the end. They have been separated for quite a while, but they miss each other. They want to get back together. And then finally they get reunited, and then they go out there once again and doing the things that they were born to do, being chased by monsters and unmasking them in the end. But Daphne, who gets more screen credit in this movie than she did ever in the old 60s cartoon, says that she wants to go to a place where there are real monsters, re real places that are actually haunted. And wouldn't you know it, in that moment, they get invited to an island called Moonscar Island that is believed to be actually haunted. And once when they get there, once when they get there, they meet the, they, uh, they meet the, the owner of the place, which is named Simone. She also she also has a woman that follows her around named Lena, and they also have a ferryman named Jacques. And they all and there is also this fisherman that shows up every now and then on the island that is played by Mark Hamill. And as soon as I found out that Mark Hamill plays the fisherman, I'm thinking, where are they finding these big actors? I mean, geez. I mean, Jim Cummings plays the ferryman. There are some big names in this movie. Am I missing someone? Oh, yeah. Billy West. Billy West plays Shaggy in this movie, and Billy West is also known to play Fry from Futurama. So, this movie does have an ideal cast, and for a movie that came out straight to DVD, that is definitely saying something. But anyway, while they're on this island, suddenly zombies start popping out out of the ground, and that's where this movie really picks up. I mean, when they, I mean, when the creators of the show said this time the monsters are real, they are not joking. I mean, seriously, talk about spoiler alert when, when they said that, but I guess they said that because, um, because, you know, this movie is supposed to be made for like five to eight year olds, but I got, but I got to applaud this movie in so many ways because there are several moments in this movie where it could possibly terrify people who are five to eight year old, eight years of age. I mean, how do I know that for for a fact? Well, you're looking at a guy right here. When I was like six years old watching this movie for the very first time, there is one scene in this movie that absolutely terrified me. Something that actually gave me insom insomnia. Something that actually gave me nightmares when I was a kid. And that was the scene where Morgan Moonscar goes from a skeleton growing zombie flesh on his body. I mean, guys... <laughs> Do you remember that scene? Scared the piss out of me when I was a kid. I mean, I thought I was watching a plain old a plain old Scooby-Doo movie. I was not expecting that. But anyway, there's a lot of other creepy moments in this movie. Like, for example, there's a scene where a zombie gets his head pulled off. There's also zombies that are coming out of quicksand. There's even there's even cat creatures that that fry, that fry and melt off like Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's even a scene where people get eaten by alligators. And while I'm explaining this, you're just asking yourself, I thought this guy was talking about a Scooby-Doo movie. What the heck are you talking about? But yeah, all of that is in this movie. So the creators of this movie really did go the extra mile in this Scooby-Doo movie. And I do applaud the fact that they didn't just want to make another Scooby-Doo story where it's just another unmasking in the end. It's just no different than the old TV show that we all know and love. They wanted to bring out something new. They wanted to bring out something that people would remember. And even though this movie did terrify me as a kid, the more I grow up, the more I... The more I'm no longer scared of it, and the more I get even older, the more I absolutely love this movie. Because I think I enjoy the fact that it did terrify me. I enjoy the fact that it didn't treat me as just some little kid just watching another Scooby-Doo episode. It treated, it treated me like I'm, like I can handle that type of stuff. As Don Bluth once said, that little kids can handle anything just so long as it has a happy ending in the end. 
And for a Scooby-Doo movie to go that extra mile, I mean, it's a straight-to-DVD movie. It did not have to be this good. I gotta, I gotta say, for a Scooby-Doo movie to go that extra mile, I have to give it a round of applause. And as for the characters, they're... All the characters are insanely interesting, and several of them, and several of them are either very suspicious or some of them are a little bit too friendly, that it gets to the point where you think to yourself, yeah, I have no idea who the villain is. You le legit do not know exactly who is responsible in the very beginning. I mean, for some Scooby-Doo movies, you can figure it out, like, immediately. Even in some old Scooby-Doo episodes, you could figure it out immediately. In this movie, it takes you all the way to the very end to finally figure out what is going on. And even though, once when you reach that point, it's... It kind of feels like for a moment that it takes another extra step. However, that extra step is exactly the crossroads that brings this whole story together. And I gotta say, creative writing, creative writing and characters that I have been following around this entire movie, I say well done. And that that's not the only thing that this movie does really well. And that is the coloring, the setting. I mean, it's down in Louisiana, so it has this swampy, marshy feeling. So when it's at nighttime, you see this orange-like orange -like full moon with the swampy areas all around. And you see the silhouettes of zombies chasing, chasing after everybody. They really knew how to do color in this movie. And some of those color scenes brought out, you guessed it, some of the creepy moments in this movie. I mean, these aren't just zombies that are growling or just walking around like they do in The Walking Dead. I'm saying that these are zombies that are moaning. They sound like they sound like they have this echoey moan that that kind of brings shivers down your spine and their eyes glow in the dark. And I did mention a little bit ago that there was a scene where a zombie gets his head pulled off. Now, Walking Dead rules that if you take care of the brain, the walker is dead. Nope, this zombie straight up picks up that head and places it right back on his head. So, they seem very unstoppable, which brings out the big fear factor that I really enjoyed out of this movie. So, even though that this movie did scare me as a little kid, I still continued watching it because I just really had to know what happened next. And even today, as an adult, I still enjoy this movie. So, I gotta say, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island has got to be the best Scooby-Doo movie ever made, and so I have no choice but to give it the category of legendary. So guys, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Whatever you thought, comment down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next video.